And to other national matters now, victims at the National Orthopedic Hospital in Kano have commenced the International Committee, commended rather, the International Committee for the Red Cross ICRC for helping them once again live a normal life. ICRC, in partnership with the management of the hospital, donated artificial limbs to the victims who are in dire need of prosthetic devices. And joining me live now in the studio is Emmanuel Bicho who is the ICRC's Communication Head of Sector for Africa. Good to have you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay. Uh, I know that you do a lot of work, and I know that very recently also you've been in Madugri. Let's start, first of all, from understanding what did you see in terms of you know, humanitarian activities and IDPs. Share with us your experience. Yes, I've been to Madugri last week and uh, to visit our subdelegation that we have there. And uh, I visit some of the programs that we have in town. Um, I think I want to talk to you first about this little girl I met to this hospital that we are supporting. She's uh, five years old, her name is Aisha, and she was victim of a stray bullet. Um, so she had to undergo an operation um, that, I mean, multiple operation, and that little girl she was smiling and she was all happy and in spite of her situation in spite of the situation and i could just admire the work that our colleagues are doing but it also reminded me how difficult access to healthcare is in the country in the, of, not in the country in that in the, the northeast region how the conflict the impact of the conflict had on the situation we know that a lot of um, healthcare facilities have been uh, under attack a lot of healthcare workers don't really work in some of the areas and it makes it very, very difficult for the population to have access to those uh, places, to um, health facilities, to a doctor. And I was very much impressed by the work that our team, um, together with the Ministry of Health, are doing for the weapon wounded people. And, and it also reminded me how important is it, even in, during armed conflict, to protect those facilities? Because mm -hmm. that's where people will go and we need them. Um, and they have to be protected at all times. I was also very much impressed because um, they're they are coping with the situation and we're trying to help them with um, mental, I mean, to help them in what they're doing so they can cope with life better, they can cope with the events better that they are. Uh, doing so that's what one part uh, that was really nice and mm -hmm. we're talking about um, also this prosthetic yeah. uh, so this little boy and he was playing with I mean playing trying to walk with his crunches I think mm -hmm. he was six or seven years old he was also victim of a stray bullet and had to be amputated and it also reminded me how important it is to continue this work for those people mm -hmm. um, and it's a long-term job that uh, we have when we talk about prosthetics because mm -hmm. obviously a little boy first he will need to learn how to walk yes, with the yes. crutches and you will need to see how stable it is before he get a prosthetics and he will grow so we have to we will have to accompany Monitor him them. exactly yeah because i was just going to ask you emmanuel why did you feel that it's necessary to you know bring that intervention to all of these amputees uh, because it's a reality of the field because mm -hmm. you know if uh, if if you have some because if you have some people um, being under fire and getting wounded it can happen that uh, they would need they would be amputated and mm -hmm. it happens I don't have the, the numbers of the victims exactly mm -hmm. sorry about that no um, but they need they need that follow up they need that support mm -hmm. and um, that's why we have to get into this uh, prosthetic um, support mm -hmm. uh, to able to cope with life and to um, to live with dignity and to start their life again yeah you know it's I think it's in a lot of countries where we would hear you know this happened to me but someone helped me and mm. I got this prosthetic and I, I can get my life on, back on track. You can see people with um, prosthetics going back to the field and work. Life can be normal again. Mm -hmm. And they 
have the right to this of um, to a normal life again. Yeah. I think it's a very important point that you've made there, Emmanuel. You know, talking about giving them back their dignity and having to live a normal life again with your intervention. Now, according to reports, we know that over three million uh, people have been displaced since uh, Boko Haram. Uh, this whole uh, thing uh, started. This is by UNHCR data from them. And you just spoke how powerfully your intervention, you know, is how that has changed the lives of some of these victims wounded. Now, I want you to speak to us about the shrinking space, you know, for humanitarian activities. Even you who provide it, sometimes, you know, we see that you don't even get free access. You know, we have had stories of humanitarian aid workers who have been killed. Speak to us about that reality. I think it's a real concern. It's a real concern not only in Nigeria, but I think in a lot of countries. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we see that there has been a multiplication of um, armed actors all over Africa, which makes it very difficult to know whom to talk to, whom to have ac to to see who we can talk to in order to have access. Um, if we look at the Sahel, also it's a um, it's a really there's been a lot of um, attacks, uh, security issues that makes it again really difficult to have access to the communities. But I think it's good to remind. Uh, everyone that when we talk about humanitarian action, this humanitarian action is a principled one, meaning that what we do, we do it for the um, victims of armed conflict. We do it uh, you know, um, <laughs> according to our rules, and our rules are uh, we have to be impartial, mm -hmm. we have to be neutral, and that's what we do. And uh, it's, it, we keep on striving to get access to those people all over the world, um, in a lot of contexts in Africa as well. And uh, it's an effort, we don't spare any of our efforts to that. But it's true that then uh, with this shrinking space for humanitarian action, we have more difficulties to access the people. Mm. And the people, again, they're the, peop they're the ones suffering from any kind of conflict. And they're the ones that need, that have dire needs and that uh, the people that we want to support. So I think when we talk about this, it's also important to remind all parties of all conflicts that there's something called international humanitarian law. Mm -hmm. And this international humanitarian law, if respected, um, can also be a great, I mean, that's, that's the basic. Mm -hmm. You have to respect that's the, the civilians. Mm -hmm. You have to respect the wanted and the sick. You have to respect the detainees. So that's what we want to promote. Mm -hmm. And that's why we would also help us get access to the people. And hopefully, uh, you know, seeing this humanitarian space um, Open enlarge, up a opening a little bit more. Exactly. All right.